the third match from Kyoto on March 24th, 2024, was a three-person tag team matchup, a six-person tag team matchup, if you will. It saw Azumi, Lady C, and Seiya Kamatani, that being Queen's Quest, taking on Odeo Tai's Momo Watanabe, Natsuka Tora, and Ruwaka. Um, uh, this match was good. Uh, of course, you're never going to see a bad match between Queen's Quest and Odeo Tai. Uh, sometimes I get a little tired of Odeo Tai's antics, wrestling outside the ring. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm getting really tired of with this show, and, and, and it's a good show so far, but the camera work on this show is rough. Uh, it seems like, I don't know if it's Stardom's norm, normal cameraman, or because this, I think, was a pay-per-view, if it's different cameramen, but they seem obsessed with shooting from about eight rows out, aimed at the corner post. And you'll see it in some of my um, images that slide by here as I do the talking about this match. It really took me out of it, and it's taken me out of a couple of these matches, but I'm... <sighs> it's hard to explain, guys. I, I really don't want to come across like I'm some kind of stardom critic now. This company's the best in the world. I turned off SmackDown tonight to watch this show. I can't get into American wrestling. It's just... It's typically bad, especially their television shows. So I turned to stardom to... Give me my fill of good, solid wrestling done right. And while they do that, some things need work, and the cameraman on this show needed work badly. But this was all about Odeo Tai trying to gain an advantage the entire time of the match, trying to take advantage, advantage of um, Lady C, and um, doing all they could to do that. But it didn't work. Lady C worked well here. She looked, she's getting better all the time. There's no doubt about that. And it came down to Seiya Kamatani trying to do a top rope maneuver onto Odeo Tai. They grabbed what I call Ruwaka's lunchbox, this great big container of sorts that they carry around all the time. Threw it at her, hit her with it, and while the referee was distracted with all the going on outside of the ring, every member of Odeo Tai, including those not wrestling in this match, hit a move on Seiya Kamatani until she was weakened to the point to where Momo Watanabe could come in and finish her off uh, rather easily, really. I mean, she hit her finisher, the B-driver, um, and the big kicks and just everything she could and laid her out just shy of the 10-minute mark. Um, so, yeah, Seiya Kamatani gets pinned here by Momo Watanabe. And I think that's the biggest part of this match. I think we're starting to see the re-rising, if you will, of Momo Watanabe. She's climbing back to the top of this roster, hook by hook or by crook. doesn't matter if it's fair. Um, she's doing all that she can to get back to the top. Uh, shockingly, she did not um, leave. She's not leaving stardom. She's staying. Kind of really surprised me with Rossi leaving. But here she is, starting to climb up the ladder by pinning... Seiya Kamatani, the one who many thought was headed to the red belt before her injury. She goes down to Momo here, and that was the most important and most impressive part of this match, to tell you the truth.